In this lesson, we'll continue to explore the seven domains of IT responsibility when it comes to business challenges. In this lesson, we will pick off by talking about the workstation domain. Now, if you recall, we have various domains that are a part of a organization when it comes to IT responsibility. That includes the user domain, the workstation domain, the local area network domain, the LAN to WAN domain, as well as the wide area network domain, the system and application domain, and the remote access domain. Focusing our attention on the workstation domain, what we want to be sure that we focus on is understanding that this relates to the devices that are gonna be used by end users within the organization. And so when we put it into perspective of the other available domains related to IT responsibility, the workstation is referring to those devices that could be a laptop, a tablet or mobile device that allows for the user to access appropriate information. So this is important to keep in mind because this is the point in which the user is authenticated to access important uh, information related to the organization. And this is where uh, security threats and compromises can occur. And so typically what we want to keep in mind is that we focus our attention on ensuring that the workstation is connected to a secure network. And with this in mind, we want to ensure that the traffic that are that's passing through the workstation network is encrypted and it's protected and that the workstation is on an authorized wireless device and has connection through a valid entry point to the local area network. And so there are various considerations to keep in mind when we're talking about the workstation domain. Um, authentication of that workstation is very important to ensure that the identity um, and, a, and important uh, information is protected. And the workstation is going to define the controls that will govern that protection as well. So this will mean that they're, they're, for the user that is using the workstation, that there are going to be limited uh, rights associated with it. And so this means that the, the user is going to have, not have full access to the workstation. Uh, so typically a central management system is what will be utilized in order to ensure that the workstation uh, is working appropriately. And so the central management system consists of various important components that help to keep the workstation working smoothly. And so this can typically be done by using whatever available management system. A popular version would be the Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager that can be utilized to help to help govern and protect workstation devices. And so these types of management systems uh, help in, can help an organization save time and money uh, and provide for quick setup for the workstations that a stakeholder has to use. So there are various components that are gonna be associated with that workstation as well. And so these components include inventory management, uh, discovery management, patch management, help desk management, log management, as well as security management. And so what we can do is we can focus our attention on each of these different types of uh, key management functionalities that are gonna be available within a workstation central management system. When it comes to inventory management, this is going to be important because it helps to track devices as they are able to connect to the local area network. And so this allows for the organization to understand what devices are active on the network and what um, devices should not be on the network that might have access. 
And then we ha also have a discovery management component that is a part of the CMS. The discovery management component is in place to help detect software that might have been installed on the de device. So this can, it can detect information from on a workstation. And so, so this allows for any software that should not be on the system to be identified for removal. Additionally, the patch management system can be used in order to help uh, updates be installed on devices. And so this is going to definitely apply for security patches, software updates that are required. And essentially this allows for vulnerabilities to be addressed. Then we also will have the help desk management system. The help desk management system is in place to provide appropriate support um, to users on for their workstation devices. And so this is going to uh, provide for help desk technicians and computer support technicians the ability to remotely access and diagnose various systems and problems or issues that arise on that workstation. Another important management component is the log management system. And a log management system is going to be helpful in keeping a repository of, of active uh, logs and transactions that occurred on the workstation. And so with this in mind, this can allow for administrators to find security weaknesses or patterns that have been logged through the log management functionality. And then of course, there is going to be security management uh, and the security management is going to oversee the security of the workstation that the user has. And it basically ensures that users of that workstation will have limited rights um, that are limited to um, being able to access uh, the functionality of the software, but not being able to necessarily add or remove software unless they have administrative uh, administrative rights. And so uh, an appropriate central management system is definitely an important part of the workstation domain because as companies become more complex and technology evolves, the devices that connect to the networks are also going to become more complex. And so now instead of just desktops that connect to the network, you're going to have laptops, you can have a tablets, smartphones, even uh, smart devices like uh, smartwatches that can connect. And so these are just some of the different uh, management functionalities that need to be included in a properly working central management system for the, for the workstation domain. And so, of course, with the various um, the various devices that are available, there are different approaches that can be taken depending on the organization. Uh, common approaches for users to access workstations will be they can bring their own device. And in this context, what we have is users are able to uh, bring their own devices to work and connect to the network. It doesn't have to be a laptop. It could just refer to their smartphone. Um, and typically this is going to require some additional security components in order to ensure proper access and uh, proper oversight. Uh, many organizations allow for users to choose their own device. And with this, perhaps the organization will provide the user with the option to choose the type of system they want. Um, whether it's a Windows mach machine, uh, Linux, or Apple machine. And then, of course, the company is also able to provide specific equipment. And with this, in, in, with this approach, this allows for the organization and the company to maintain a stronger control over the security associated with the devices that are able to access their networks. And so with the workstation domain, we see that there are a number of different uh, mechanisms that need to be in place to maintain the security of that workstation and also ensuring that that workstation doesn't access the network erroneously.
Next, we'll move on into another domain, and that is the local area network domain or LAN. And when we think about the LAN, this is basically what allows for the workstation to connect uh, to the to the network and typically it's going to refer to it can be a, a local office or building or even um, a small region of a city that constitutes the local area network and so this could be involve a number of different things or components required to connect to the network um, and so it could be you're connecting to the network through a wireless router or a wireless network device at home, and or you could be using a cable modem that could, that is directly connecting you to it. And there are a few different components that come into play that allow for uh, devices to access the local area network. And so those components include uh, switches. These switches allow for direct direct traffic, and you want to think of a switch as being very similar to a hub. A hub would provide copies of all traffic out of all ports, and so this allows for you to set up specific rules so you can understand uh, what traffic is allowed to flow through the switch and what isn't. And so this can be used to help maintain and reduce traffic on the, on the network. We also have routers and firewalls. Now a router is what connects the local area network um, and wide area network. And a router is going to be used to direct the traffic to the appropriate um, switch or hub to, for accessing that information. Then we also have our firewall, and a firewall is like our, our proactive gatekeeper. It helps to filter traffic into and out of a local area network. And so there are various um, components to keep in mind. So you can do packet switching and packet inspections to ensure that um, uh, security threats are not uh, making their way through the firewall. And so this is a uh, overview of how the various components come together to help create a local area network. But we also have to consider that we can have various or a couple of different network types as well. And so some of those types includes um, a flat network. And the thing to remember about a flat network is that it has few controls. Um, and so it um, can't necessarily limit the network traffic. Um, the workstation would be connected to the flat network and it's able to communicate with other computers on the network. Another type of net, um, local area network is a segmented network. And what this does is it's segmented in that it can limit the interactions that occurs between the various workstations that exist. So this can allow for traffic to be limited based off of switches, routers, and firewalls, and other devices. And so a typical organization will likely have a segmented network that they are utilizing in order to maintain an appropriate uh, structure. And so we can have various things that are in place that can monitor the communication over our local area network. And so this could be um, things such as a sniffer as well that can detect uh, the, the packets that are being transmitted on our network. And so we also have our local area network to wide area network domain. And this is going to be a bridge the, it bridges between the local area network and the next domain that we'll discuss are wide area networks. And so it's important to keep in mind that wide area networks are used to connect global offices and offices across cities, countries, and even different continents. So that is what a wide area network does. And we'll get into that next, but in order for 
the local area network traffic to communicate with the wide area network, there has to be appropriate mechanisms in place that allow for that communication to occur. And so that is the purpose of the local area network to wide area network domain. And the basic structure that we would have with a local area network to wide area network domain is that we're going to have a publicly available wide area network that can be utilized. Then we'll have our other components that are a part of it, such as our DMZ, and this is uh, the demilitarized zone. And so this allows for segmentation to occur. Um, and what it's basically is allow allowing for um, a buffer to be transmitted. And so the demilitarized zone will sit outside of the private network, but it will be um, facing the public internet. And so then we'll also have our private local area network that has the various workstations, the servers, and the routers that allow for us to uh, connect with the public, um, public wide area network as well. And so, and the bridge also between this is the, the local area network to wide area network domain, and the wide area network domain is going to encapsulate all of the devices that are going to be on the organization's uh, network. And so typically you can consider it like its own internet. And so companies will use the internet to connect offices and this allows for uh, communications to be secure and private. Uh, a VPN or a virtual private network is typically used to provide a layer of security um, and protection so that information is protected and not easily accessible. And then we also have other technologies that are making it possible for better utilization of the wide area network. So with cloud computing, we have software and other infrastructure components and platform services that can be available on the network. This makes it easy for uh, system configurations and installations. It also allows for the organization to have better control on the software that is on devices as well. And so typically these types of services and accessing uh, cloud computing services is going to be done through the wide area network. So these are some considerations and things that we keep in mind when we talk about uh, working with the workstation domain, local, local area network domain, wide area network domain, and the LAN to WAN domain.